Hi, this is James Gardner, the Senior Tech Geek, and in today's video, I'm going to go over how to make an LMS. What's an LMS? A library management server or a library management system. So, what do you need one for? Well, you've got a lot of DCPs and content coming into your facility, and you need to load them onto all the different players. An LMS can act as a central repository where you can just load them all onto that unit, and then from there, you can over the network fire them out to uh, the player that you want. Now, who, why would you need an LMS? Well, TMSs do a lot of this, but if you've got three screens or less, it's hard to really justify a TMS. Back in the old days when we had film, it was very easy to manage all the content going everywhere, so I don't see why we need to spend $15,000 and 25% maintenance a year just to do something which is not that difficult to do. And you can build your own LMS, which would make it even easier um, to, to manage, especially your small screen or independent cinemas, which I hope take advantage of this information. Now, I'm just using an old Dell server that's been discarded. It's just an i3. Um, uh, you could also upgrade that, for example, put more memory. It really depends on what you've got spare. It really depends on how much storage you want to use. In this demo version, I've only got a 250 gig system drive and a one terabyte um, data drive. But of course, you could go up to a server, SSD system disk, would, which would I prefer. Uh, if you want to get more serious, um, some sort of RAID card like an LSI and put you know, three or up to eight drives in there and really go to town. Um, it really depends up to you. Now, what are we doing this with? Well, you'll probably see here, um, this is just uh, running Ubuntu Linux. Um, all the DCI servers out there are based on Linux, apart from one. Um, and, well, Linux is really the native OS of DCI, and it's the most reliable, and, you know, it's, you know we, don't want to corrupt, we do not want to corrupt the DCP disks, and keeping onto Linux makes that uh, less likely to happen and you know rel training on mounting and dismounting the disks properly needs to be taken into account but so what are we going to do here well when a drive comes in you want to load it onto this system just copy it onto it into a directory and then we're going to make that directory shared onto the network via an ftp and then the um, dci players on the network can then query the machine for what it content it has and you can select this 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 and go bang and it'll just drag it all down uh, over the network as you know especially like if you need to change a lot of content overnight you might have all the content loaded um, you log into all your plays you select all the files you want to to download and you push go you do it on each of your screens and then you can go home for the night because when you come back in the morning uh, it'll all just filter down and all go through so it saves you a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of costs if you can do this very simple implementation so how do we install it well this is just a basic Linux uh, Ubuntu desktop install, um, 1404 long-term service. Um, so it's less like, you know, it's more reliable, etc. It's the more reliable release at the moment. Uh, it's the one I would suggest. It's just a basic install, download the ISO, go through the instructions of making a USB stick, plug it in, boot off the USB stick, basically return, 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 all the default settings pretty much, and you end up with a desktop like this. So now I'm going to zoom in on the screen and I'm going to go through the next parts of how to um, make the um, data drive ready to be mounted in a particular location, then um, setting up the FTP server so it exposes that drive to the network, and then finally I'll log into an, my, one of my SMSs uh, here, in, here in my facility and I'll tell it to talk to this machine and to pull content from it. Anyway, here we go. Let's get into the close-up of the screen. Just a quick plug. As you know, I do this all day, every day. Um, it's what keeps me living, but I really would appreciate if um, people who may be doing this think it's a bit too hard or want some extra help, and you're in Melbourne, Australia. The Finishing Room is my company. It's a QC theatre, uh, grading and finishing room, DCP mastering, KDM generation, all those sort of services that you may need if you are going to the big screen. So please give me a look in, I appreciate it. It helps me keep doing this to help you understand this industry. Uh, really passionate about making these pictures look as good as possible on the screen. And uh, I do this video to keep people informed to make sure they know what they're doing and everything goes smoothly. But if you do need some help, I'm ready to help you. Uh, so please give me a call, uh, www.finishingroom.com.au. And back to the video. 
Okie dokie. Now, first thing we're going to do is we've got a second disc here. And we're going to have a look at it. So I'm just going to push that that button up the top. Type disc. I've already typed it. Discs. And you'll see this tool. And click on it. And you'll basically have a list of all the devices connected to the machine. So you can see there that's the system drive. And then there's an old um, NTFS disc there that was from uh, the old install on this machine. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, fix this disk or get it ready to make it into a data disk for my um, LMS. Now you may have a RAID system which you RAID a lot of dis disks together and it should also once boot it up sharp in here as a big disk or a named based on the RAID or if you put a 6 terabyte disk etc you would naturally get it listed here. Now I'm not going to use um, this tool to do it because I prefer to do it uh, on the command line because it gives you more control and it allows you to do um, more, you know, better things. So we're going to run terminal. Right, I know, it's a bit scary, but it's not too hard. And we're going to go su do a tool called gdisk. Right. Um, now you need your password. Okay, now what we're going to do here, well actually I have to run it um, and name the disk. Now you can basically, if you have a look here, you'll see that it's um, SDB is the name of the, is the disk. B is the first partition or the one is the first partition because it's been partitioned. We're going to repartition the disk. So we just go SDB, uh, which is the raw device of the disk. Push return. Now what we're going to do, push question mark here, and you'll see um, we want to create a new empty partition table with O. Push O. You want to proceed? Yep, want to do that. Make sure you actually specify exactly the right disks because if you get it wrong, if you s select the system disk by mistake, you pretty much screw everything and have to start from scratch. Now we want to make a new partition, end for add new partition, and then you just you go through all the defaults. Return, 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 and then you want a W to write. You say, yep, I'm sure I want to do this. Bang, it writes a new partition table, and you'll see this thing in the background's changed, and it's now got a Linux file system, and type unknown, blah, blah, blah. Now we actually want to make a file system on that disk, because currently it hasn't got a file system. Um, if you do DF, um, you'll see the devices there, and the main um, devices used on Ubuntu these days, you'll see here is an ext4, right? So it's mounting um, slash, which is a system drive. It's an ESD4 type um, file system. So we're going to go uh, mkfs.ext4, right? Just make sure it's there, yep. And we're going to um, basically uh, give it m slash m0. Well, what does that mean? It means that under Linux you don't want to um, use any... Uh, under Linux it has a slight per percentage of the disk that it uses just for root, just in case it gets full, um, so root can still do its thing. Now we don't need this in this case, and if it's a really big disk and you're using 4% of it for this um, special area, um, we're saying you use 0%. 4% of you know a 25 terabyte partition is a, is a lot of data. So you want to make sure you put that to, to nothing. You want to label it DCP like that. And then you need to give it the device SDB, right? That we named before. Check it again, SDB. Okay, one, because we made one, the first partition. That's what we're going to put the file system on, right? Bang. We need to do it as sudo, which means to do it as root, and off it goes. Makes the file system for you. This can take a while. Oh, that was pretty quick. Now um, that file system is made, we want to make it so it mounts every time we uh, boot the system. We want to mount it on uh, sudo uh, mkdir slash dcps. Right, so we're making a directory in the in the, in the root called DCPs, and we're going to mount this disk onto that location. So we've got that. Now we also want to know um, ls slash dev slash 
disk by UUID. Just ls, uh, put a dash l in there. Just give you long. And basically you'll see here, these are the UUIDs. And they point to these particular disks. So the disk that we just formatted is stb1. And there's the UUID. So what you do is you copy that. All right. Then you um, probably g edit um, slash etc slash fs tab. I would check generally use vim, um, but it's a little bit hardcore. So I think this will. I'm not really uh, too uh, familiar with this, but there you go. There's an editing window, and basically the easiest thing I do is I, I basically just get um, copy that, go to the bottom, paste it again. Go up here, copy that, copy that, paste it over the top of the UUID of that one, make it go to DCPS, right, and pretty much everything is good. So now when the system boots, it'll mount slash, it'll mount the swap partition, and it'll mount our new disk onto slash DCPS and that'll do that every time it boots and if there's something wrong with the disk it'll probably when you try and reboot it it'll probably come up and say there's a problem there's a problem please fix it before I boot um, but yeah that's that's where uh, it goes from there so save that and off we go now if we do sudo mount dash a which basically should reread the fs tab files, um, file and check that all the you know, all the entries in there are mounted and now that's happened so if we do a df now you'll now see there is a new disk mounted dev sdb1 that one terabyte data drive is now on slash dcps so there we have it we have our system disk and now we have our data disk and slash dcps ready to copy uh, any content to it the next thing i'd probably do too is uh, mod uh, 777 uh, probably dash r just to make sure 777 slash dcps right that's just to um again uh, sudo um to make sure the permissions are all you know fine they're a bit open but it's not really much of an issue because it's, you're the only one really going to be using it and permissions aren't really an issue here so there we go now we have um that going we can go here and uh have a look at the computer and you'll see in here where is it? DCPS. Now, really all you need to do now is you need to copy DCPs into here. So I'll just pause for now and I'll go plug in a DCP drive. Okay, now, um, instead of a DCP drive, I've got a, um, a good old USB stick here. It's probably got a, a trailer on it. So I'll plug that in. When you plug it, plug it in, oh, it popped up automatically, you can see there on most US, U, um, U, USB um, drives you'll have a directory and in the directory you'll have the DCP. On feature DCPs usually it would look more like this. So the difference is if it was a feature DCP and it looked like that I'd make a new folder and I'd call it the name of the DCP. New movie do that then control a copy all that's in there you want to control a make sure everything is copied and copied into there right and there it will go off and copy the content into that folder and you'll have new movie in there or in the case of this I would just basically drag the whole folder doing bang there and it, and it would have a similar effect of making a directory and putting it in that directory. So those are the two ways to copy it to your system. Now, that is still copying, so we'll need to wait for it, right? But one very important factor to know is that you should never eject a drive unless you have ejected it first, or never unplug a drive unless it's ejected. So this button has to be pushed and no icon should be displayed and then it's safe to take the drive out if you do it while it's doing this of course there's a good chance you will corrupt the data and it will no longer be readable like for example you would lose a file and it might be the CPL file and without that file or part of the, the video 
you've lost that file, the DP, DCP's gone, it's, it's corrupted. So this is very important because um, the ISDCF has uh, released um, a document recently on the do's and don'ts on how to deal with DCPs and basically they say is don't plug it into anything that it's not supposed to be plugged into. Like um, DCI players etc are actually designed so when you do plug them in that they mount them read only. You could do that at mount them read only too if you really uh, wanted to by hand but by default they just automatically mount but they mount them read only so when you do eject them uh, when it's the wrong time there's a good chance they'll still work but even then you can still damage them but that's a very it's far far uh, more unlikely that you will if i ejected this or pulled it out right in the middle of this copy there's a good chance i would corrupt this um, device or this this um, dcp on this device so the most important aspect of it all is you need to be very careful with that because when a lot of DCPs are traveling around and being reused, going back to dispatch and then send out to another location, and oh, look, the last place didn't deal with it properly or treat it properly, it's corrupt. Everyone, battle stations, let's get a DCP there so we don't have a dark screen. So there, that's um, how we copied the DCPs onto the server. Now, um, I'll stop it and I'll get prepared to show you how to get the FTP server going. Okay, now we're going to install VS FTPD. So sudo, oh, sorry, apt get install VS FTPD, right? It'll go off and install it. There it goes, it's going to the internet, it's pulling it down. There it goes. Now, another thing you want to do is sudo add user dcps, right? So I'm going to add a user and I'm going to make it dcps is the password just to make it very simple. Right? Uh, is this correct? Yes. Right, now, um, I'm going to also change um, gedit slash et slash past wd. Now, what I'm going to do in here, gedit, sorry, bring it up here. I'm going to go to the bottom, and there's a new user I just made. And I'm going to make its home the actual slash dcps that we just created, right? So it's going to now um, use that as the is the area of the home directory of that uh, FTP user. So if we FTP to uh, 127.0.0.1, which is the local host, DCPS, DCPS, uh, DIR, there you'll see that new movie directory that I made. So there you go. It's done. We can now basically FTP in and pull the content from this machine. So we go to new new movies. New movie. There you go, there's all the content. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? One little side note here is that when you do make the new DCPS user. Uh, you may want to log out and log back in as that user. So when you start copying from uh, an attached disk or USB stick, that um, so DCPs, DCPs. When you start copying across, the permissions will be correct for the FTP access. The only issue you may see there is that when you do do that, um, the desktop will create all these other uh, erroneous files and in that directory slash DCPs and you may want to put it one extra directory down if you want in the path to keep it more clean so you have uh, the DCPs in, a, in their own directory but that's really up to you uh, and you'll you'll get it once you do this you'll see what I'm talking about here because you'll see now that now I've logged in as DCPs the file that I copied before the love story DCP there is actually now all mixed up with these other like music videos and pictures directories which have now been created. Just just keep that in mind. And we'll set up the FTP so a uh, DCI player can get to it. 
Now let's log into a DSO player. I just need to set up an IP address to, to my, so I can get to it. I'll just do that and I'll come back straight back. Actually, I might actually show um, setting up the IP because typically in your environment, you'll need to do custom IPs. So we're getting into uh, configuration and network. Wired, and we're going to go options. And basically we've got the um, IPv4 settings. Now it's currently on DHCP, so it's picking up the IP address uh, automatically. I'm actually going to set it up to manual, and I'm going to add uh, 10.11.1. Oh, let me put it there. Uh, add another one. Now this time I need to put it on the actual subnet of my support network, so I'm just putting in that now. Um, I'll give it the same IP. And it doesn't need uh, a, a gateway because it's just on there so it can talk to that network. And that's my DNS server. So I'm just setting up it all um, uh, manually so it will work properly with my configuration because most cinemas will have some sort of custom configuration. Okay, now. So theoretically, I should now be able to pin 10.30.100.11. Eleven, which is my server, which I can't because I haven't turned him on. Give me a sec. Okay, here we are. We're going to set up the IMS to ingest the content. Now, here we go. I'm loading the web browser. Got all the IP addresses right now. I typed the IP of the um, of the Dharami server. I log into it. Um, I want to go to Content Feed Manager. What's there, or well, you can go down to here and you'll see it here as well, Content Feed Manager. Now I've already made it here in test, so I called it new LMS, FTP, the IP address, DCPS, same DCPS type slash, slash DCPS is um, you know, the path to it from the root. You don't really need to change anything in, in there because it's for other things which we don't really need to use. And you save that. Um, one, two, three, four. Um, and we're ready to go. So now we go to ingest scan. Now you'll have down here new LMS. So you select that. It'll scan the FTP server and there we go. There it is. Now I just can click there and hit ingest and off it goes it's starting to pull that content from a little server here this little dell over the network into the ims now you of course could have selected uh, one or you could have selected 20 um, bits of content it will just ingest them one at a time until it is finished you could also log into multiple locations and do 10 each and it, as it'll take some time to push all that over a, a one gigabit connection, but it'll all work. That's another possibility of an upgrade. You could drop in a, a 10 gigabit NIC going into a 10 gigabit port uh, of the main switch, which then would which would fan out to all your screens, and you get a far better transfer. You'd probably want to get some sort of RAID disk to sustain that sort of throughput as well, because. Um, a 10 gigabit NIC can pretty much go nearly as fast as a common um, hard drive. Probably not now, but it used to be able to. So about 120 megs a second, which is pretty quick. Um, probably a bit more, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, but there you go. So that, that's how to make uh, a little LMS. Then to set up uh, a Dharami IMS 2000. Now all of them have a similar uh, implementation. Uh, GDC do something very similar. So do Cube. Um, I've got two of them, so I've, I know them quite well. I'm sure the other systems would be able to implement the same sort of content manager or content feed manager scenario that you see here on the Dorome slash Dolby product. So there we go. An LMS on the cheap, showing you how to build one from scratch, install the software you need to make it work, and um, then program your IMS to actually talk to it. So uh, not, not hard, doesn't take long. Uh, easily to turn some old equipment into something very useful. Um, really negates the need if you're three screens or less to having to purchase and maintain 
uh, TMS. It's quite expensive. Uh, and you know, in my personal opinion, you don't really need them if you're three screens or under. Three screens, it's not too bad, but if you're under three screens, it, I don't see how it, the, the, the cost for an LMS over just doing it yourself, I don't really see the benefits. Anyway, thank, thanks for watching. Uh, James Gardner, The Cinetech Geek. Bye for now.